All right, so I'm gonna be showing you guys how to use PropStream. This is just a, a general sense of what to do with PropStream, how you're able to put, pull up lists. Um, so basically you go to PropStream.com right there, and then you have to create a, web, uh, create a user. Um, you go to that website. So first thing that I do, basically you go to search. On the left, this left side, it should have all your info, properties, as in things that you've looked up before, I mean, contacts. Um, this one actually has, has all, all the properties that we've looked up before, you know, areas and all that stuff. So either way, I mean, the main thing is if you go to, go to your search. So let's say, for example, I'll just pull up a list, a small little list here. I'll go to Phoenix. You know what? I'll go to Glendale. Glendale here. Glendale, Arizona. And then now it's going to bring up all the properties here. So these are the properties on the MLS, pre-foreclosures, auctions, foreclosures, cash buyers, liens, all the, the usual. So the first thing would be putting in that city and then that's your, gonna be your first list. So I'm gonna go to filter. From here, owner occupied. I don't really mind if it's occupied or not. Or not. It doesn't really matter to me. Um, it might matter to you depending on if you're trying to reach the owner, you know, by door knocking or not. So you want to pull up a list of uh, pre foreclosures and the house is rented. You might want to use that. But either way, it's the same thing. So occupancy, um, I don't mind if it's vacant or not. Property characteristics. So this one, I use it. Uh, if it's a residential, I'm going to click here. If I'm looking for vacant land down there. Um, depends on what you're looking for. So you have all these uh, different filters. For now, I'm just gonna do residential. You could do any of these other, just depending on your search. Property type, again, multifamily, condos, whatever you're looking for. Uh, for me, I'm just gonna do single family homes. Perfect. Bedroom, to me, it doesn't really matter. Um, there's a reason why people look for four bedroom, three bedroom, two bedroom. There's a lot of people that do fix and flips and they are, are fairly uh, knowledgeable on adding square footage. So they'll target two bedrooms all day long and they, they know they can actually offer a lot less for their properties up to the seller. So that means you can actually go and it's cheaper for you to add a square footage, add a, another bedroom to it, go down to the city, bring the plans. And then uh, at uh, long term, you'll be offering 20 grand less, 30 grand less to that person because you're buying a two bedroom, one bath, so 30 grand less. And they'll be able to take that just because they know they're selling a house with you know two bedroom that's harder to sell. So mentally, that, that'd be a good technique. Uh, but for now, I mean, it doesn't really matter to me. Um, MLS, I actually put that it's not on the MLS. I don't really care for properties that are, are on the market. Usually properties that are on the market, they want uh, full value or, or full market value for whatever they're listing. It. So usually that's the case with that. So pre foreclosure. So you can actually add all these items here. Um, I don't mind if they're pre foreclosures of now, but if you're doing a pre foreclosure list, you can definitely do that. And then your, uh, your numbers are actually going to change up over here, depending on how many come up. So ownership. Usually, I mean, a good rule of thumb, you can actually do seven years or, or six years or more. I mean, depending on, on what you're looking for. So I'll just do seven years of ownership. So I wouldn't do one year, two years. If they just bought it yesterday, you know, it doesn't have any equity. If they bought it three years ago, it's probably still in the same condition. The person probably still doesn't need to sell. The house probably doesn't need any fixes. So, I mean... Seven years, a lot of things happen in seven years. Um, kids move out of high school already, or maybe they got it before they went in high school. So a lot of things can happen in seven years, So and plus it has equity. So, I mean, this might be a good number there. Um, that I keep that there. Owner type, I usually do individual. I don't want corporate. Corporate is going to bring up a lot of the LLCs. Trust is going to do the same thing. So for skipping purposes, it's not going to skip corporates. You have to kind of figure out another way to find out there. Uh, their actual contact for a corporate. So I just do individual. And then as, I, as I'm clicking all these buttons buttons here, my list keeps uh, updating. Okay, so valuation is huge. 
uh, depending what you're looking for in your market, it might change. In my market, I know that, you know, the norm for a house that will sell pretty quick, maybe get an offer. Okay. Got an email here, cool. So basically, um, you have to know your values in the market. I mean, I know three hundred thousand dollars or or less for the for the value will sell immediately on our side. So I mean, if we can get a property under, let's say two hundred thousand, and it's worth three hundred thousand, so it's just telling you how much it's worth. If I get properties at six hundred thousand dollars, I'm trying to wholesale or get a, a, a contract down. I know I can't move it that fast. So the sweet spot for us here and in, in where I'm looking at Glendale is going to be anything between 160 to 140 and then I know the value is going to be around 300,000. So that's how I estimate this number here. Okay, so I wouldn't do a million dollars, you know. You can it's going to be pretty tough unless that's what you're marketing, but I mean, I wouldn't on our market. Mortgage info. Okay, so for this one you can do free and clear. You know that they've paid off the whole house. So my list is going to get us all smaller. So it's 10,000, 8,000 um, that I've found that's uh, free and clear. They don't owe anything for their houses. Um, and then you can just keep adjusting them depending on the area that you're looking for. So for me, uh, let me change this up. I'm just going to do, let's say, hotels and houses. It'll show you for each property. Yeah, I don't really care for that. So other than that, you're going to choose your area. Let's see. We get the little pencil here. And I will just go ahead and target this area here. Little pencil. Just do like a square. So now I'm just looking at properties in this area. And then they should all come up here with those same filters that I just added on there. So now I have 1,177 houses with that info and they're all fully paid off. Amazing, huh? So now you can actually see four of those are in for, uh, foreclosure and then you can actually adjust your list depending on what you're trying to do with that list. So let's go back into the filter. You can tighten it up as much as you, you want valuation um, mortgage info if you want more context I would take off free and clear and you can just add that they owe so much on the property but as for now I'm just gonna leave it there it's, uh, liens. we're gonna do a smaller list here for the purpose of the training uh, values let's say 250 see how that changes our Oh, there, 500, 500 houses. They're worth around 250. All of these actually, uh, they're fully paid off. Okay, so what you will be doing, you kind of choose all the properties here. I've selected 577 properties, cool. And then <coughs> we'll add to list. So here we'll create a new list. And when creating a list, I usually suggest you make it as specific as possible. So basically we're starting to add the date so we'll just do 0 to 13, 20. And then what kind of list is this? Seven years older. And then with this, I should be no, no, I should know what kind of list it is. And then I'll just do Glendo. And if, if anything comes out of this one, I know when I got the list and what kind of target area was it. And then we'll just do free and clear. The more specific, the better. Then we can actually track it. Okay, so that's my list. And now that list should come up over here. Let's see. 0113. Here it is. 0113. Here are the contacts. They show up. Cool, perfect. Contacts there. So for you to uh, skip it, you will go to skip tracing 
you will select to phones, set of contacts. Here in group, you will have to select that list. Uh, where is it? I think it should be here. My properties, that one. So we have the list there, add select to contacts. We click OK. Next. And now we have the amount that we will be paying for. Place order. We'll click accept. Now the order is placed. So once we're done, we should be able to get that going. Screen clear, yes. That's it for now. This list here, it's being skipped. So where are we? Okay, that one. So where is it? Uh, let's fade off. Zero one, zero two to the, here you go. That's it. So here it is. So it's processing and that's how you skip a list. So once it's done right now, it should show us the contacts in here. So let's wait for this to happen. Usually it's fairly quick.